I'm working on my raw water input pump for my engine. I have two engines on the rock and row. They're both Chevy 350s. And uh, instead of a radiator like a car has, they have a heat exchanger. And uh, raw seawater is pumped into one end of the heat exchanger and then exchanges heat with the uh, internal uh, cooling, coolant that the engine has. So before the, the water was pumped in through a belt-driven Jabsco pump, which was proprietary to OMC and is not made anymore, and it's like $600 on eBay if you can find them. That's kind of what I paid for the last one I had. So um, last year I got so fed up with paying so much money, I decided to try and retrofit an electric pump and I looked at the specs and it's roughly a thousand gallons per minute and uh, really high volume low pressure water and that's pretty normal for uh, any engine. Uh, my buddy runs a diesel 20 horse and it's like in the 900 gallon per minute range. These are 250 horse and they're still about a thousand gallon per minute. Now that will go, it's supposed to go up with RPMs hence the belt driven system but, uh, but uh, and that's why I've been running on 1,000 gallon per minute electric pump and uh, the engine's been running a little warm. So I decided to try another pump and I already tried putting them in parallel and that didn't work very well. So now I'm going to try, I'm thinking that 1,000 gallons per minute is plenty of water but I need more pressure because these are live well pumps and, and uh, they're not designed for high pressure. So two of them in series will give me twice the pressure but the same amount of flow. And uh, so what you can see here is this whole part is the electric. These are Piranha uh, live well pumps uh, made by SureFlow and uh, they're really affordable. Uh, you can typically find them under fifty dollars. They're a thousand gallon per minute. These are the biggest ones they make. Uh, so uh, very, very affordable. Some somewhere around around fifty bucks or less. So right now the water comes in through my filter and then in through this pump and then it would go to my heat exchanger. So now I'm adding a new one in series with it and that'll sit there and uh, so I'll get twice the pressure. Uh, it's kind of a crazy plumbing job. Uh, I'll illustrate that on the blog. Uh, but uh, yeah, so this is a Chevy 350. But like I said, this type of setup should work pretty well for just about any water pump. And the reason you'd want to do this is that these pumps are really cheap. Uh, you can have some on the boat. Uh, they, you know, they'll last for about six months. Uh, is what I've gotten. I, in the last year, I've gone through two of them, and. Uh, the way I uh, detect that they're going low is I check every time I start my engines and uh, I also have a little electronic circuit that sets off an alarm if, if one of these stops flowing for whatever reason. Uh, and I'll hopefully document some more of that on the blog. All right.